My name's uh, Alan Schulte. I'm a partner with Bain & Company here in Bangkok. Uh, Bain is a global management, consultant, management consultancy, and I lead the firm's uh, airline logistics and transport practice in the Asia Pacific region. All right, I've been told to keep it positive today, so you can grade me at, at the end. But there's, there's four main messages I want to leave all of you with. The first is that overall demand will recover, and it will recover quickly. Um, but it's going to look a lot different than what we saw two years ago. The premium travel will suffer disproportionately. We're going to see a massive reshaping of, super, of the super hubs um, and how that brought travelers, especially from Europe, the Middle East, North America, into, into Thailand. And then there's some shifting expectations that customers have across travel brands. We're seeing more of an emphasis on hygiene and sterility and the perceptions of that over luxury. Anytime we do forecasts, it's important to have a scenario-based view. When we started doing forecasts um, a couple, about eight, I guess 12 months ago now, we were much more optimistic on two of these dimensions, um, both the, uh, the disease progression and, and the, gov the, the level of government cooperation. We've been massively disappointed, as, as I think others have, uh, have opined today, with the level of cooperation that we've seen on uh, testing protocols and on uh, vaccine distribution. Where we've been surprised in, in a very positive way is on uh, the robustness of GDP growth and the resilience of consumer demand. There's, there is a large uh, amount of latent demand that you see in the market today. Um, and, and so here's, here's our forecast over the next four years. And when I talk to executives at, at airlines, you know, every two or three months, their forecast for when recovery comes gets extended by another two or three months. So I think early last year, we were looking at recovery of 100% past that 100% line of 2019 demand by, 20, by 2023, and it's extended by 2025. And that uncertainty about government cooperation has created these massive uh, sort of uh, deltas in, in when we can actually expect uh, demand resumption in aggregate. The good news, or at least one of the pieces of good news, is that we're already well underway in Asia. Asia is leading the way when it comes to demand recovery. And you can see here, uh, uh, Asia domestic recovery is already well ahead of the others, and international is, 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 not, is not far behind that. Something of importance for all of you, for, you know, with a, with a long-term um, dependence on, on wealthier and higher spending tourists from, from Europe, North America, Japan, we, we anticipate a far slower recovery of long-haul travel into the country. Uh, versus short haul. Another big uncertainty is what's going to happen with business demand. A number of companies have, have, uh, have announced uh, long-term reductions in what they expect to do for, for corporate travelers, um, and that's going to that's cause a massive reshaping of, of travel patterns. Uh, business travel, whether it's in economy class or business class, tends to represent about 60% of, of airline profits. So you take that away, all of a sudden the business models for a number of airlines uh, falls apart. Um, and so here's our forecast of what, of what business travel looks like. And it, it's very difficult to understand sort of what, uh, you know, on a company by company basis, what this is going to look like. But it could take us a decade to really get back to the levels of premium demand um, that, that we had expected before. And so there could be fewer, uh, fewer aircraft flying, but also you can imagine the, the, the types of seats that are on those planes. Um, and, and when we think about networks, I think a lot of you would, would sort of remember from just even a couple of years ago, this last decade we saw this emergence of point-to-point of -point travel. Of, we had seasonal flights from, from Sweden, from, from Germany, all going into Phuket. We anticipate a lot more of that is going to go away and we're going to go back to what things maybe looked like 15, 20 years ago, much more of a point-to-point -point based uh, model. In fact, you know, if, there, if there's some good news, Bangkok is a powerful uh, inbound demand hub. So, so if anything, there could be uh, a large, a large uh, recovery of demand into Bangkok, but if we look at secondary destinations into Thailand, it's going to really, it's it's going to really depend on connecting travel uh, from Thailand, from from Bangkok rather, and and fewer fewer international flights coming into secondary destinations in the region and in our country. Um, another thing that I spoke about was 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 the uh, was the breakdown of the the super hubs. These 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 large uh, large international airports that have uh, you know big big airlines attached to them that are bringing customers from from all over the world uh, into places like Bangkok. Um, we expect not all of them will survive. There's going to be a massive consolidation 
of these large carriers. And if I look at just one example, say from Stockholm into Bangkok, you'll see a couple of the point-to-point -point providers will, will sustain in the recovery, but there's three or four different carriers who may not make it. They, they just will not be able to sustain the network connectivity that brings travelers out of Europe, out of North America, and feeds them into uh, Southeast Asia, China, Australia. Um, I, I think part of the good news, though, is if even if we're suffering from fewer long-haul travelers coming into the country, um, we were already investing in um, a lot of the, the infrastructure here in, in Thailand for um, what, what's been a reshaping of the tourism sector, where we have more, more tourists coming in from, from China, from, from India, far more travelers coming in on an LCC, which is a more resilient business model to begin with, and people are coming from a lot of different uh, cities. So we have, we're, we're much more leveraged across um, across different sources of, of uh, demand coming in. A couple of implications I'll leave you with. One is we're, we're massively overbuilt on, on the fleet side. We estimate about 4,000, 4,500 uh, 4, aircraft will have to leave the global fleet um, over the next five years. Either this will be displaced orders or, or additional early retirements. Uh, another piece is that customer sentiment has changed dramatically. I, we, at Bain, we, we look at what drives loyalty, what drives purchase behavior amongst consumers in travel brands. A couple of years ago, it would be on-time performance. It would have been a premium, a premium service, the food and beverage on board. The number one predictor of loyalty and purchase behavior today is perceptions of sterility and hygiene on the plane in the hotel room. And so if we think about how, you, how you're trying to create a value proposition for your customers, we need to reshape what it is that customers are looking for and think about how do you communicate new ways of new, new value, uh, new value proposition messages to your customers to communicate that that sterility, that hygiene, that you care about their safety, and that you're investing in it. Thank you.